The patrons have spoken, and so Keldeo it shall be. Keldeo is the fourth member of the Swords of Justice, the group of legendary Pokemon inspired by the Three Musketeers. Keldeo, as the newest and youngest member, represents D'Artagnan, with its tail resembling his famous featherhead cap. It also was the star of its own movie, where it faced off against Akiram constantly shifting between its base, black, and white forms. Finally, back in the 90s, it was in a very famous TV show. Today, we're taking a look at Keldeo's horsing around in the competitive scene. And so, we ask, how good was Keldeo actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. But before we start, here's a quick note on the sole difference between Keldeo's two forms, its base form and the resolute form. The latter was required to run Keldeo's signature move, Secret Sword, whereas the base form was not. This meant that technically the base form was superior, as it didn't reveal whether Keldeo actually had Secret Sword or not. But since every Keldeo set ran Secret Sword anyway, most players disregarded this and simply chose whichever form they thought looked cooler. Anyway, Keldeo didn't get to debut in Gen 5, until Black and White 2 rolled around. But as soon as it arrived, it was instantly one of the best Pokemon. It had a vicious stab combination, as being a water type that effortlessly sliced through Ferrothorn was amazing. And it was backed up by the base 108 speed that made Terrakion so dangerous. It was a special attacker, but its signature move, Secret Sword, hit the opponent's defense stat, a la Psyshock. Since it was also a stab fighting move, this meant that it was a special attacker that even Chansey stood absolutely no chance against. Keldeo had an incredibly restrictive effect on team building. Previously, sand teams ran two water resists in order to fend off rain, but now that Keldeo was around, one of those water resists had to also resist fighting. This meant the combination of Ferrothorn and Rotom Wash, which had been so good against rain in Black and White 1, would no longer cut it. This was a significantly limited list, and as far as OU went, it was pretty much the Laddie Twins, Celebi, and Jellicent. Rain teams could also use Tentacruel and Toxicroak, but in addition to being completely dependent on rain being up, Tentacruel was completely complete fodder for substitute combine Keldeo, which was admittingly rare since it lacked immediate power and coverage, but could not be ignored as a possibility, and Toxicroak was not as easy to fit on teams. Technically, there were also Dragonite and Gyarados, but given that Keldeo blasted the former away with Icy Wind, and the latter's Stealth Rock weakness, lack of recovery, and inability to hurt Keldeo without the two-turn bounce, nobody would ever try to actually counter Keldeo with them. Despite not being OU, Amoongus was great against it, since it wasn't weak to Pursuit like the Laddies, Celebi, and Jealous and the two other non-OU Keldeo checks, the Slow Twins. This brings us to the next factor that made Keldeo so dangerous. It was incredibly easy to break through its checks with minimal team support. If it was used on a Sand team, it had easy, powerful pursuit support from Tyranitar against its few checks, and if it was used on a Rain team, it had an absolutely stunningly powerful Specs Hydro Pump, which could overwhelm even the bulkiest of its non-water immune checks with sheer strength. Its power could not be overstated. Its Specs Rain Hydro Pump had had a decent chance to KO Dragonite and Gyarados after Stealth Rock, despite their resistances. The spec set was dangerous and immensely difficult to check, but it wasn't the only thing Keldeo could do. It started using Choice Scarf, which was absolutely amazing. With its speed, typing, and decent natural bulk, it kept the immensely dangerous Quiver Dance Volcarona in check. It also handled Dragon Dance Dragonite, making it an excellent tool against dangerous hyper offense teams. Keldeo's speed gave it the jump on other Scarfers in the tier, like Garchomp, Salamence, Genesect when it was allowed, and Jirachi when Genesect was banned. Though Scarflander's T would not gain popularity until much, much later on, when it did, that was another Scarfer that Keldeo blew past. This made Scarf Keldeo an amazing late game cleaner, especially on rain teams where its water stab functionally received a specs boost. This was deadly on a Pokemon that outsped everything. Keldeo was considered for a ban not long after Genesect left the tier, and was suspect tested alongside Tornadus T, but unlike Tornadus T, it wasn't actually banned. Despite rain taking a hit from the loss of their Hurricane Abuser, Keldeo continued to plow through the metagame. Now both choice Keldeo variants were immensely dangerous, but many players managed to hang on against it by dancing around the moves it would lock itself into. So Keldeo adapted, and when it was able to switch between moves, it became even more of a monstrous threat. No longer could Heat Ramp protect on it and then either switch to Gliscor on Secret Sword or Ferrothorn on Hydro Pump. Now Keldeo would effortlessly slice through them using Expert Belt, 
to capitalize on the many super effective hits it doled out. The boost was small but appreciated. No longer could Ferrothorn just barely survive Secret Sword. Keldeo was now more terrifying than ever, but it didn't stop there. One of its best counters, especially defensive Celebi, was absolutely everywhere, as it was also one of the few checks to Sheer Force Landorus Incarnate, and could stave Rain Teams off better than ever with Tornadus Therian and Genesect gone. Then Keldeo slapped on Hidden Power Bug, and Celebi was no more, and the metagame flew into disarray. HP Bug wasn't just a good anti-Celebi move either. It was super effective against the Laddie Twins. With Stealth Rock up, an Expert Belt boosted Icy Wind on the switch would weaken Latios into HP Bug Range, with Icy Wind speed drop allowing Keldeo to outspeed it. Latias was preferred over Latios much of the time for its ability to survive these two moves, as well as tank specs Keldeo more efficiently, but it was brutally weak to any pursuit Tyranitar. Keldeo and Landorus Incarnate were an amazing pair, as they shared checks in the Laddie Twins and Celebi, and could remove them for each other. Alternative Alternatively, Pursuit Tar could trap their checks for them, as it also destroyed Jellicent for Keldeo. Even Amoongus wasn't entirely safe, it still feared Bandit Tyranitar's Pursuit on the Switch, and it couldn't just stay in lest it get smacked with a Crunch or Stone Edge. Eventually, Landorus Incarnate was banned, and Keldeo became a little easier to handle, without such a nuclear partner, but not by much. Keldeo also showed off just how easily it fit into teams by leading the charge of weatherless offense used by many top players. Its spec set was nigh required on them, as weatherless teams' biggest problem was dealing with rain, especially the Ferrothorn Tentacruel combination. With Stealth Rock up, Keldeo's rain-boosted Specs Hydro would two-hit KO both, giving its teammates the leg up they so needed. It was good against Sand too, as a Specs-boosted Hidden Power Ghost would two-hit KO most of its non-Amoongus checks. Since Keldeo kept dominating, it was suspect-tested again, this time on its own, and, yet again, it was not struck by the Banhammer, letting it stay in OU for good despite the protests of certain players. It was never content to sit on its established sets either, always finding new ways to maul its checks despite its limited move pool. It started toying with options like three attack calm mind sets with various gems. After a calm mind, Fighting Gem would give Secret Sword the push to bust through Rotom Wash, Gastrodon, and Jirachi, while destroying Ferrothorn without a calm mind. Ghost Gem allowed it to plow through Jellicent, making it terrific at slicing through Sandstall teams while also powering through Celebi. Keldeo also started to use HP Grass on its Expert Belt set, since Celebi started to die out and Grass was great for Gastrodon, Jellicent, Politoed, and Rotom Wash while still hitting the slow twins hard. Speaking of the Expert Belt set, Keldeo began to ditch the actual Expert Belt, as as long as it kept an eye on the damage calculator against Ferrothorn in particular, it wouldn't be left wanting for more power, especially since so many of its hits were neutral and the longevity of Leftovers was an Arceus send in the Spikes infested metagame. It didn't even stop there with constant set tweaking. Despite being initially panned, sub combine sets gained popularity, as they completely destroyed all sorts of Tentacruel rain, especially the ever-irritating rain stall teams. Eventually, Excadrill was re-released into OU, with the caveat of not being able to use Sand Rush on Sand teams. However, on rain teams, it was fair game, and it was a dangerous weapon for them, as if Sand teams won the Weather War, they would have to contend with a Pokemon so dangerous they weren't allowed to use it themselves. This was a win-win scenario for the rain team because of Scarf Keldeo backing Exodro up. This duel meant that the rain team had both the best cleaners in their respective weathers, and thus nearly every rain team ran the Sand Rush Exodro and Scarf Keldeo combination until Rush Drill was banned entirely. Of course, Scarf Keldeo remained a mainstay on rain after the ban because it cleaned up so hard, but it was also more free to run other sets like Specs, which experienced a research for its sheer power that was able to threaten even Amoongus. Scarf Keldeo was also an excellent Pokemon on Sand teams since they often struggled against Volcarona, and Sandstorm chipped opposing Pokemon like Rotom Wash into Keldeo cleanup range more easily. Speaking of Keldeo on Sand Teams, yet another new set emerged, the Toxic Protect set. Toxic crippled nearly every single Keldeo check, like Latios, Jellicent, and the Slow Twins, with Protect allowing it to stay in and rack up damage on them, as well as scouting the attentions of faster Pokemon like Latios and Scarf Landorus T. But wait, wasn't Amoongus one of the best Keldeo checks? What would Toxic do against it? Well, nothing, but that was fine because for its water stab on this set, Keldeo used Scald, which would cripple Amoongus with a burn and wear it down incredibly quickly in sand, especially in conjunction with spikes. Keldeo's ability to constantly reinvent itself, despite its fairly limited move pool, was impressive. But even if the opponent knew what was coming, Keldeo was just an incredibly difficult Pokemon to deal with. Overall, Keldeo was one of Black and White 2's most defining, dangerous Pokemon throughout the generation's existence.
The sixth generation did nerf Keldeo somewhat. Its water stab was weakened as Hydro Pump dropped from 120 base power to 110 and Surf from 95 to 90. And there was no more permanent rain. Even Hidden Power was weakened from 70 base to 60. However, that didn't stop Keldeo from once again becoming one of the best Pokemon around, possibly even better than the prior generation. Its choice spec set quickly established itself as one of the metagame's most important and most threatening Pokemon. Spoiler alert, throughout the entirety of Gen 6, OU's existence, that never changed. Oh sure, its surroundings varied, and at times it experimented with different filler moves, but at its core, Specs Keldeo defined much of XY and Oraz OU. Scarf Keldeo was fairly popular for a time too, as it checked dangerous threats like Dragon Dance Mega Charizard X, but it wasn't nearly as threatening, and it could also not switch into Bisharp like the Specs set could, because it couldn't afford to lose its Scarf like the Specs set could afford to lose Specs against a bulkier team. For a time in late XY, Substitute Calm mindsets were quite popular popular too, though they had the same problem as Bisharp. In Oraz, some players used Rest Talk Keldeo, making full use of its unique, important defensive utility against dangerous threats like Weavile and Bisharp. However, when it came down to it, Specs Keldeo was simply THE set. No frills, no nonsense, just pure damage. From the Hyper Offense XY metagame, where it resisted Bisharp and Mega Mawile Sucker Punch, checked Dragon Dance, Mega Tyranitar, and Gyarados, and was one of the few Pokemon to truly threaten Aegislash without fearing instant death in return to the bulky spike stacking Oraz metagame filled with Ferrothorn, Clefable, Heatran, and Gliscor cores, Specs Keldeo simply ripped through everything. Keldeo gained new checks like Azumarill and Mega Venusaur that weren't threatened by Pursuit, while old checks like Amoongus and Starmie appreciated the lack of permanent rain boosting Keldeo's attacks further or permanent sand digging into them, but it didn't need support to deal with them. It just opted for Scald as its spammable stab, as the power gap between it and Surf was no longer as significant and the burn chance was devastating. Especially since Keldeo got so many opportunities to fire it off on a game-to-game -game basis thanks to its great speed. It made it very difficult to play around Keldeo and very easy to play with Keldeo. Even if a counter switched in, it could still be crippled by a burn, meaning that the safe move was almost always the correct move. Most burn immune Pokemon couldn't safely switch into Scald either. Gliscor and Fire types were obliterated by it, with the exception of Volcanion, who was still Stealth Rock weak, had no recovery, and couldn't handle repeated Secret Swords. Magikarp Clefable wasn't an option either, as it couldn't withstand Specs Keldeo's power. Jellicent and Gastrodon did see some usage, as they were able to deter Scald safely, but they weren't perfect answers to Keldeo as a whole. Gastrodon struggled to stand up to Secret Sword if not at full health, and was completely shattered by Focus Blast or Hidden Power Grass, while Jellicent also feared Hidden Power Grass, especially since it had to run Cobra Berry instead of Leftovers, so it wouldn't instantly die to Pursuit like so many other Keldeo checks. Speaking of Pursuit, it was still as excellent alongside Keldeo as ever. From the early XY options of Aegislash and Bisharp, to the ever-reliable Tyranitar, to the Oraz editions of Weavile and Mega Metagross. This was because the Laddie Twins, and come Oraz, Mega Latias as well, were incredibly common, as a Keldeo check was necessary on every team, and their ability to check Landorus Incarnate and Mega Charizard Y was important as well. This made Keldeo a natural partner to those threats. Thus, Pursuit was an effective weapon, especially as it also dealt with other Keldeo checks like Starmie and the Slow Twins. Just like the previous generation, even Amoongus feared Choice Band Tyranitar, and if Keldeo had managed to burn it with Scald, it was simply lights out. The same went for Reflect-type Mega Latias, attempting to avoid the trap. Band Titar was an especially nasty partner, as it could bypass Cobra Berry Jellicent by going for Stone Edge, and it also trapped another decent Keldeo check in Assault Vest Tornado Styrian. With Stealth Rock and Pursuit support, Keldeo was, in theory, uncounterable, especially since it wasn't limited to Scald's 80 base power for its water stab. It ran Hydro Pump on the same set, since its move pool wasn't so wide that it would be giving up on other important moves to do so. And the extra power was often key, such as against a chipped Clefable and Mega Scizor. But of course, good players managed to play around Keldeo throughout the generation, utilizing tactics like Protect Heatran to scout which stab Keldeo was going to fire off. But they were never able to completely stop it, and it was always a safe, consistent choice to dish out damage on a game-to-game -game basis, partially thanks to the burning powers of Scald, especially when Keldeo Keldeo started to tweak its moveset with additions like the aforementioned Focus Blast and HP Grass. Icy Wind was nice, but often unnecessary, as it was usually better to just burn and or trap the Laddie Twins. Focus Blast and HP Grass, on the other hand, expanded the amount of havoc Keldeo could wreak. Focus Blast was excellent because it had a great chance to drop Rotom Wash from full HP, meaning that Rotom was no longer the temporary stopgap it was often used as early in the game when it was healthy. Focus Blast also one-hit KO'd bulky Pokemon like Physically Defensive Tangrowth, came close against Gastrodon, powered through 
through Manaphy, slammed the hell out of Suicune, and made sure Ferrothorn looking to survive a Secret Sword stood no chance. Also, Focus Blast did not have its base power nerfed the way Hydro did, so it meant Keldeo still had a 120 base power move to throw out. It was so strong that even resists were not entirely safe. If even bulkier Pokemon like Clefable and Gliscor were chipped, they would struggle to switch into it comfortably. Hidden Power Grass, on the other hand, did not have such scorching power, but it did provide crucial coverage, like a cold one-hit KO on Gastrodon, a ton of damage on Rotom, a strong hit against Suicune and Jellicent, and incredibly importantly, it slammed Mega Slowbro. Regular Slowbro could often be dealt with via Scald Burns and Pursuit Support, but Mega Slowbro boosted with Calm Mind, healed off Burns with Rest, and had an immense defense stat that made it difficult to trap with Pursuit. Thus, it was key for Keldeo to be able to actually pressure it with damage before it got going, because once Slowbro Mega Evolved, it would be immune to critical hits thanks to its shell armor ability. Some players even use Focus Blast and HP Grass on the same set, dropping Secret Sword because the benefits of both moves were so notable. However, this was rare, and Keldeo usually stuck with Scald, Secret Sword, Hydro Pump, and one of Focus Blast or HP Grass. Incidentally, this meant that Keldeo should now always choose its base form, as now the opponent could actually discern that it did not have both Focus Blast and Hidden Power Grass if it was the Resolute form, which would have to have Secret Sword. And of course, Keldeo always ran its two water stabs. Overall, Keldeo defined its second consecutive generation of OU with its spec sets performance throughout Generation 6. There was never a point where it wasn't one of the best, most important, most dangerous Pokemon in the metagame. Keldeo's OU defining streak came to a screeching halt in Generation 7. It went from being nigh uncounterable to having two basically perfect counters. First, there was Toxapex, who had immense bulk, resistance to Keldeo stabs, endless longevity between Recover and Regenerator, could haze away Calm Mind Boost, and couldn't even be made to take residual damage from Skull, since burn damage was now halved from 12.5% to 6.25%, meaning it didn't outdamage Leftovers or Black Sludge in Toxapex's case. It also, crucially, was not weak to pursue. Second, there was Tapu Fini, who didn't pack Toxapex's immense longevity, but was effectively just as bulky and resistant against Keldeo stabs, threatened Keldeo with Boom Blast, had Defog to prevent itself from getting worn down by hazards, and thanks to its ability that summoned Misty Terrain, it couldn't even get burned by Keldeo's Skull. It wasn't just these two Pokemon that made Keldeo's life really, really difficult, though. The metagame's multiple new fairy types significantly limited its opportunities. Tapu Bulu didn't want to eat a Scald Burn, but it was bulky, resisted both of Keldeo's stabs, and its grassy terrain Horn Leech kept it healthy throughout the game. That same Horn Leech also threatened Keldeo with a one-hit KO. Tapu Koko only resisted Keldeo's fighting stab, but it outsped it and destroyed it with electric terrain boosted thunderbolts. Tapu Lele quad resisted Keldeo's fighting stab, had the special bulk to take a water hit if needed, and destroyed Keldeo with either stab option. It was especially useful if running Scarf. Finally, while Magirna didn't resist either stab, it had the bulk to hold Keldeo off, and it of course destroyed it with Floor Cannon. It wasn't just about Keldeo losing to these Pokemon. It was that these Pokemon were so common that Keldeo often struggled to find opportunities to switch in. Not only that, but it had immense competition in the form of Ash Greninja, who had spikes, priority, and water shuriken, and was much faster, giving it many more opportunities to wear the opponent down. It outran crucial targets Keldeo missed out on, like Kartana, the Laddie Twins, Mega Deancey, Superior, and Tornado Styrian. Ash Greninja also, of course, had the potential to evolve into an absolute monster of a Pokemon if it grabbed a KO. So was there any hope for Keldeo in Gen 7? Well, as it turns out, yes but not much. Early on, Scarf sets were solid Ash Greninja checks, both pre- and post-evolution. Keldeo could withstand its hits between its resist to both stabs and good natural bulk, while outrunning and threatening to KO it with Secret Sword. However, this set fell out of favor because it wasn't very good against anything that wasn't Ash Greninja. Some players tried Calm Mind sets with a Z Crystal attached. Keldeo was much more powerful than Ash Greninja and boosted Hydro Vortexes or All Out Pummelings made full use of that. The last move was Taunt to prevent Haze from Toxapex, which was nice but left it without the anti-Tapu Fini and Bulu coverage it so needed. It was a bad kind of pick your poison. These sets had varying degrees of success, but were overall inconsistent in a metagame that had numerous hard walls and faster revenge killers alike. Substitute combine sets were similarly ill-fated. Some players experimented with Taunt over one of its stabs to completely dominate Toxapex, but both stabs were crucial, and that set only really handled Toxapex. It didn't do anything to its other usual checks. Finally, good old Specs Keldeo came back, but it was more immediately 
overtly threatening against much of the metagame since it didn't need to take a turn to set up with Calm Mind and it gained an extra move set to boot. With Hidden Power Poison for Feeny and Bulu, it was actually fairly difficult to wall without Toxapex. In fact, several well-regarded stall teams lost to Keldeo almost single-handedly, and thus some players enjoyed using it to take advantage of opposing players who were known to not use much of Toxapex. Keldeo took a big hit in Gen 7 and mostly struggled, but it never dropped to UU. It always had a niche in OU, however slight. It was probably a bit underrated overall, as being unprepared for Specs Keldeo and running into one is not something that can be easily played around. With Keldeo's overall low usage, that was the case fairly often, and good players did what good players should do. Make use of that fact to gain an advantage over their opponents. At the time of this video, Keldeo is not necessarily a bad Pokemon in Generation 8 OU. However, it definitely isn't what you could call good either. Toxapex is still around and as unkillable as ever, which in and of itself is a near death sentence, but it doesn't stop there. In addition to Toxapex, Keldeo is held back by a ton of common useful OU Pokemon like Clefable, Slowbro, Amoongus, Dragapult, Rillaboom, and Zeraora. Thus, in a historic move, the Pokemon considered for Ubers many times dropped to UU. But there, it is one of the best Pokemon in the tier. Its specs and scarf sets were given an immense buff in the form of Flip Turn, a Water-type U-Turn clone. It's weaker than U-Turn at 60 base power, and more importantly, it's physical. But it's not about the damage. It's about the fact that Keldeo can safely scout its switch-ins and maintain momentum, meaning it has two incredibly safe moves to span. Scald being the other. This makes it easy for Keldeo to lure in its checks and bring its hard-hitting teammates, such as Terrakion and Mamoswine, to threaten huge damage. Now, Gen 8 did do away with Pursuit and Hidden Power, making it more difficult for Keldeo to break past its common checks in Slowking, Celebi, and Starmie. However, what is lost there, it more than makes up for in its ability to keep constant offensive pressure on the opponent, especially because it gets so many opportunities to do so, with how many other top Pokemon it threatens, including, but not limited to, metagame staples like Crocodile, Kurem, Mian Xiao, Opsagoon, Galarian Weezing, Dual Blade, Bisharp, Incineroar, Mamoswine, and Rhyperior. It's especially easy to click Flip Turn with Keldeo, because there aren't that many water immunities. Plus, Dry Skin Heliolus gets crushed by a single Secret Sword, and Seismitoad can't take too many of them either. Jellicent and Mantine are immune to Flip Turn and don't mind Secret Sword, but Keldeo can still ruin them by slapping on Toxic. A move that is also effective against its most popular check, Slow King. Speaking of Toxic, Keldeo can also make use of of Toxic Protect to wear down its checks. It harasses opposing teams with its longevity, granted by Leftovers Recovery, accentuated further by Protect, and the ability to switch moves, as well as its ability to easily Toxic just about everything that isn't the occasional Tentacruel. Though it can't do much to its checks and thus requires support, Keldeo can also run an effective Calm Mindset, either shielding itself from status and revenge kills via Substitute, or toying with stall teams via Taunt. Overall, Keldeo is a top Pokemon in Gen 8 UU, and is likely to hold that position for some time, at least until the next batch of huge DLC changes. And that's it, so how good was Keldeo actually? Well, as soon as Generation 5 made it available, it instantly took over the metagame, shaping and destroying it simultaneously. Despite being nerfed the following generation, it was at least just as defining, dangerous, and important throughout the entirety of XY and Oraz's existence, if not more. Generation 7 hit Keldeo hard, but where a lesser Pokemon would have tumbled to UU or lower, it managed to maintain a respectable, even underrated niche in OU. It did finally drop below OU for the first time in Sword and shield, evoking a rousing chorus of what are you doing here from unexpecting UU Pokemon, but it settled in and quickly established itself as one of the best Pokemon. Overall, Keldeo has been a terrific Pokemon, and it looks to keep it up in the current generation. Thanks for watching, everyone, and thank you so much to the patrons for continued support of our videos and for voting for this Pokemon for this month's Patriot Pick. And if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Wipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Keldeo? What would you give it to make it OU? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.